Welcome to Ed Talks. So super excited about this particular series. Just dropping in some great voices from healthcare and outside of healthcare, as you heard in episode one, and just learning. And no better person than to join me today than my friend, Dr. John Lee. So John and I, we've known each other for a long time just because you know, we've held certain positions, which, you know, I'll ask you to do your, a little bit of introduction about where you came from, your longtime CMIO and uh, ED physician. Uh -huh. And uh, we also ran together. So that was fun. Raising yeah. Me. Yeah. That was absolutely fun. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was, and it was the first time I ran for uh, 13 years. Uh, kudos to my ankle surgeon who finally uh, enabled me to do that. That's right. Uh, yeah, I know. And I got to be there for it. I was witness. So. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. You know, I was trolling you and trolling on LinkedIn, and I saw the AMDIS, you know, I had FOMO, uh, the AMDIS annual conference was going on, and you were providing great insights, which I love. So I love about social media. You can sort of, when you can't be there yourself, you can follow certain people who are smart and learn from them. And I just thought it'd be super interesting to get, because I know it was a, a great experience for you, to get, you know, a couple highlights and, uh, and go from there. But before we get going, I know everyone knows you, but just in case, just do a quick uh, brief background. So ER doc, I've been a CMIO at a couple organizations. I'm actually back at my original organization, uh, not a CMIO, uh, mainly as an ER doc. I'm helping out with some of the IT stuff and um, doing some uh, IT and uh, uh, EMR consulting uh, on the side. Actually, more on the side. No, more than on the side, but that that's that's a different conversation. Yeah, and I see the subliminal advertising in your back. Yes, yes, right here. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, so if people want to work with you, they can find you. I, obviously, on LinkedIn, and then uh, look up sure. Peak Advisors. Awesome. Yes, absolutely. So, so uh, Amdis was really, uh, you know, I don't know if it was just because I hadn't been there for um, several years. The the last time I went was pre pandemic, um, or if the content just has actually gotten so much better. Um, but uh, there, there were a few things that really, really struck me that um, uh, in, in years past, it's been like about the EMR and meaningful use and uh, uh, discussing all the uh, sometimes pretty well justified warts that, e that the EMR and the whole meaningful use program has. Um, but now it was, it's more about, it really was about now that we have this digital foundation, what do we do with it? And uh, a, a great quote, uh, actually, at the beginning of the conference, they were talking about digital healthcare. Um, and I forgot which one of the speakers she said, um, uh, "It's not just it's not digital care, healthcare. It's just healthcare." Right. And, <laughs> and 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 we're get, I think we're finally getting to that point. It's been a bit of a bumpy road. Uh, but it's, um, I think we're getting there and there are things that, uh, certainly we talked about at the conference that are a strong reflection of that, that, uh, now we are actually trying to, we are actually not taking the paper paradigm and just making it digital. We're just, we're creating new things because we can do things digitally. Yeah, it's cool. I, I know Andis has come a long way. I mean, it's just grown with the industry because I remember like in 2010, I mean, it's not that long ago that most health systems did not have an EMR or an integrated mm -hmm. EMR. Mm -hmm. And so I remember even 2010, you know, we were finishing up Texas Health Resources, I think 18 to 27 hospitals by the time we were done. And, you know, we would send our CMIO and others, uh, other physicians, you know, to Amdis. And yeah, it was all about just meaningful use, just the basics. And now today, yeah. that's what was so exciting about, yeah, as you described the evolution, it's like, it's it's really cutting edge and a very forward thinking forum. Yeah, and it's, uh, um, and, and another, uh, so of course, it, although it wasn't as, as overwhelming as I thought it was going to be. Uh, but certainly, uh, there was uh, significant discussions about large language models, chat GPT, and um, kind of folds into this, that same sort of theme that I just talked about. It's not digital healthcare, it's just healthcare. And um, how the, the technology now is also is getting to the point where it's really starting to become democratized. So there were a couple demonstrations on um, actually using ChatGPT to to do some programming, 
um, and that uh, Scott Weingarten, formerly of uh, I think Zinks and um, uh, what was the latest? Uh, uh, um, oh, uh, if he was Stanton. Um, he uh, um, talked about how uh, English actually can be the new new coding language. Mm. Um, and then later on, I think for me, the punctuation, the, the sort of the uh, cherry on top of the conference was uh, the very last sessions that we did were specifically to, to vendors. And if you were an Epic customer, you went to the Epic uh, session. And they had some really fantastic uh, windows on what they are planning. Now, I think a lot of people have heard about using uh, language models to uh, streamline the um, the, the, the in-basket uh, burden, where uh, it can start predicting the language and the response that a physician may want to give a patient based on an, uh, a query from the patient. Uh, but now, but there's so much other stuff going on. So, and I think the most impressive thing for me was um, uh, on the analytics side, uh, where if you are on their Slicer Dicer and, and also their Cosmos platform, very soon, I think, you you as a non-BI professional would be able to say, you know, I've just noticed this trend in my these three patients that have come into my office. What is what is going on through the rest of my system, or actually even nationally? Are uh, is this becoming an issue? And say, so uh, I've just noticed that the last three patients that came into the ED were on. Uh, Ozempic and Wagovi, and they were not diabetic, and they were not uh, fat, they were not obese. Right. Uh, how many patients are are in that category? I'm just, in, instead of having to write some sort of query, I'll just type in, "Can you give me the percentage of patients who are on these uh, new medications uh, who are not diabetic and who have BMI less than 27?" Yeah, and you, you'll be able to come up with that answer right away. And just imagine what what sort of knowledge that's going to un, uh, unlock. Yeah, John, you know, as you're saying that, it it goes back to what we were talking about, you know, 20 years ago, and that is workflow. Workflow is king, right? So mm -hmm. something that can fit in a workflow, really simple, it's going to get adopted and utilized. And, and that's a perfect use case where even, and it, it'll even be voice, right? You could just play around. You could just ask those different queries and you get immediate response and then you can adjust your query. You know, in the old days, right? You'd have a an army of report writers and a frustrated clinician or an informaticist. They would be asking for all these reports and you'd wait days and you'd have to code these things and it was the wrong, you know, variables. And the whole process just took so long. But I, I think you're absolutely right. It is happening much faster. It's going to get faster. And that's when we'll truly see, you know, the fruit of all the labor of the last many years of laying in the foundation. Yeah, because you can't do any of that without having actual, the actual data in a machine readable form. All right. Uh, you can't, I, I guess, theoretically, we could have just flipped the switch and scanned a whole bunch of paper records, but then that would have caused all sorts of other problems. But, uh, you know, it's it's been a long slog. And I think many of the people who envisioned this back in 2009, um, uh, when high tech came, uh, was passed, thought we were going to get here a lot faster. Yeah, for sure. But the, I think those are that's how things go in 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 technology. Yeah. Unless you're unless you're like Steve Jobs and you just come up with an uh, an iPhone. And well, hopefully it's like the you know the whole uh, analogy to toilet paper, where at first it's kind of a slow roll, but as the roll gets smaller, it goes away faster, and uh, <laughs> it's sort of unraveling. Unra right? It's got it took a lot of foundation, and now right, right. seeing the speed, the velocity increase, and what about AMDES attendance for non-clinicians. So what what's your recommendation? And did you see non-clinicians participate or you know, non-doctors in North? There, there actually were. I think they were primarily in the vendor space. But I think that um, just like we're talking about this sort of low code pathway uh, that makes things like the digital space a lot more accessible, I I think that AMDIS can actually be accessible to non non uh, non health IT clinicians, and yeah. I say it that way because um, I think that non IT if you're a clinician and you're not IT, 
you can still go to it and and get something out of it now uh whereas before it was all like uh, yeah. a lot of lingo but now i think there's a, enough content there that that uh um that other people will take uh, be, be able to understand it like so for instance one of the discussions was about charging for in basket messages and i will i will be transparent that i was actually very much against it but that is also because i'm an er doc and i'm not i'm, I'm not exposed to some of this stuff and so and and it opened my eyes to the fact that they are not just getting queries about hey my my lab test says this what does it mean patients are having full out what would be actual encounters right. going back and forth multiple uh uh multiple exchanges and um you know providers need to be compensated for that yeah. and it, it really did change my mind and it's so so that sort of conversation, um, I think, would be really useful. And uh, and uh, on top of that, it would be really useful to have other people who are non-technical people uh, uh, contribute, like a, a clinician who has to deal with this on, on a daily. Or on the other side, if you're a technical person and um, you don't really understand, have a window in the clinical side of things uh, to understand what physicians and clinicians are talking and thinking about. Yeah, that, that's where I was headed with that question because I, I think there's power there, right? Because yes, you as the tech person uh, or the lay person, non-clinician, you know, you get to a little insight, learn about the issues and the challenges and, and then your wheels can start spinning about how do I we work together and collaborate and make something happen and, and vice versa. So so that's pretty cool. I, I need to make, I need to figure out a way to get to the next uh, AMDIS for sure. You know, one other thing that you mentioned, and it reminded me of our book uh, that we've worked on together, Voices of Innovation. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Edition yeah, one here. Uh, <laughs> another another uh, uh, subtle uh, plug there, right? <laughs> yeah. We actually, we actually uh, Ed Talks is no commercials or, or, or nothing, uh, but uh, certainly we are promoting this book and on a different series. I know you're going to be my guest on that because you contributed uh, to this book. So we'll talk more about it, but the sure. concept you were alluding to earlier is what we call in the book, scrappy innovation. And it's like the low code quick. It's no longer this three, wait three years and, you know, millions of dollars, but that we're enabled now to do things much quicker. And, and I like, I like the term scrappy. I have to give credit to Metro health system in Cleveland, Ohio. They wrote the chapter on that. And uh, it, it's really, really good, but John, thank well, I, I just, just, to plug yeah. in uh, for for Metro Health, I I love I didn't know that they came up with that term, but it's so emblematic of what they do there. I, I was just talking to David Kelber uh, a couple of weeks ago, and um, uh, you know they do so much with so little yeah. that they, they they I just admire them so so much. Yeah, and David's the CMIO there, and uh, yeah, they they do great. They do great work for the city, uh, taking care of, of those who have no place else to go. And uh, I, I love the organization and they've done wonders with uh, innovation and taking care of people. So John, we're gonna have you back and we're gonna be talking uh, on the on our chat on uh, Voices of Innovation, the author series. So- Awesome, awesome. Look forward back. to it. All right, awesome. take care. All right, thank you.